This video will discuss all versions of tank transfer method. Okay, the first thing I want to do is um, show you all the equipment that you will need to do tank transfer method. Everything you see here, you will need at least two of, and I'll explain why in just a few minutes. But uh, first, let's just go over the basic equipment to do tank transfer method. Now, if you look at this setup, I've kept it as simple as I possibly can. You know, there's no HOV filters, there's no power heads or wave makers. And the reason is because you will need to sterilize everything you see here every 36 to 72 hours, depending upon which version of tank transfer method you use. So basic equipment, 10 gallon tank. Um, I like 10 gallon tanks for doing tank transfer method because you know they're easy to move, they're easy to clean and sterilize, reset back up. Um, they're not as cumbersome as like a 20 or a 30 gallon tank. This actually works for most fish as long as you keep your the, the bio load reasonable. You can do you know you know a couple of wrasses, maybe a small angel in a tang, or a couple of small tangs even in this. Um, so 10 gallon tank. Um, here we have a thermometer, a heater, an air pump, a gang valve, tubing, and the tubing we have an air stone. And at the bottom of the air stone we have a suction cup, which uh, is used to keep the uh, air stone at the bottom of the tank. You could put a suction cup right here if you wanted to to make this a little bit more tidier. I want to focus on this for a minute. So this is a gang valve, and what the gang valve does is like a safety measure. If you didn't have the gang valve, the tubing would just basically run out of the aquarium and run to the air pump. And if the tubing became dislodged at the air pump, water could siphon out of the aquarium, could flood your floor. With this, if the uh, tubing were to become dislodged, it would just fall right back into the tank. So a gang valve is very important. You can buy plastic ones like this um, as a safety feature. It would also allow you to run two air stones in the same tank if you wanted to. Right, yeah, so if you wanted to, you could actually run an air stone here, an air stone there, if you're quarantining um, more fish. I stress, though, to try when you're doing tank transfer method, keep the bio load reasonable. Don't overload the tank because, you know, obviously it's only a 10-gallon tank. There's no biological filter. It's a simple setup, but the fish has everything they need. They have heat. They have oxygenation, um, and it works in most cases. Uh, let's see what else we have over here. So... We have our lid, which we discussed in another video, and it's just basically a crate, but on the bottom are screen that my wife sewed in. <laughs> and what this does is this keeps smaller fish in the tank. So let's say you're quarantining some small gobies or wrasses or something. If they jump, they're not going to jump through the hole. They're going to hit the screen and go right back in the tank. So this would go on top to keep the fish in. Um, let's see, another little tip. Um, I use, like to use the coarse bubblers air stones. The reason is because um, you don't get that, like the, all the micro bubbles, you know, the fine mist from the fine air stones. I, you know, the coarse bubblers just seem to work better. Um, you don't want to fill this up all the way because you are using air stones. Uh, maybe fill it maybe two thirds to three quarters of the way. Um, okay, so everything you see here, you, you put the fish in. Um, so depending on which version of tank transfer method, and we're going to get to that in just a little bit, you're either going to keep the fish in here for either 36 or 72 hours, and then you're going to transfer the fish to a whole new tank. So it's going to be basically just like this, but a copy, but it, it's a whole new aquarium. So what do you do to sterilize this? Because you're going to need to keep rotating these tanks in and out, and what do you use to sterilize? Well, what I use is I use vinegar. So I just use regular vinegar with paper towels. Now, in my opinion, this doesn't really sterilize, it disinfects. So what I do to actually sterilize is after I've cleaned everything, you just wipe everything down with the vinegar soaked paper towels. I throw away the air stone. I mean, who knows how much moisture that absorbs. I don't think it's really worth it to, you know, reuse the air stone, but you know, you can toss that, but everything else you would just want to you know, wipe down with a vinegar soap, paper towel. You'd want to rinse it really good. Inside the PVC, you want to be sure to actually, you know, with the paper towel, actually, you know, get inside here really good and clean it because you don't want to leave anything unturned. And then what I do actually is once it's all done, once everything has been, you know, wiped out and it's, uh, it's been rinsed, I actually use a fan. 
So basically you would kind of take this, put it on its side, you could put the fan here and you would, you know, blow into the aquarium because, you know, you're, you're trying to sterilize any waterborne pathogens and if you completely dry it, the pathogens aren't going to survive. So, okay. So what else do we have here? Okay, uh, catching the fish. So there's a couple of downsides to tank transfer method. One of the things um, is that, you know, you know, having to net the fish every uh, three days or so, um, and that's not really ideal. So what I use is I use this. It's just a plastic colander. And what you can do is as you're draining the tank before you get ready to move them, you can basically just scoop the fish up and the fish doesn't get tangled inside of a net. Um, they make these, I think, also like kind of a, like a silicone, like a soft plastic if you prefer that, but I just use the hard plastic one. Okay, so when the fish is in here, there's no filter, so you know, you've got the heat, you've got the air stone going, but the other thing you need to be concerned about is ammonia, because I mean, there's no biological filter. In most cases, a fish can be in a tank like this for three days or several fish, and they're not going to produce um, enough ammonia to worry about. But if you are worried about ammonia, that's where this comes in. You can use Seachem Prime or you can use Amquel. And you can actually, with this, you can dose it every 24 hours and it will neutralize the ammonia for 24 hours. So if you're really worried about ammonia in this, every 24 hours, dose Prime, keep doing it for the entirety. Um, and that's it. Okay, so to recap, the way tank transfer method works is when you receive the fish, you put the fish in a setup like this. Um, you can use um, new salt water or what some people do is they just, if you're sure that your display tank is uh, disease free, you can actually um, store water from a recent water change and you can use you know, display tank water to do tank transfer method if you want to be economical about it. Either way, you fill it up, you have um, the fish in here and then every 36 to 72 hours you're going to completely remove the fish from this tank and you're going to set up um, a, a duplicate of this tank everything just the way it is but nothing is reused and then you're going to transfer the fish into the next tank you're going to sterilize this tank because you're going to have to reuse everything again in another 36 to 72 hours to complete tank transfer method so that's just a recap Standard tank transfer method eliminates marine ick only. It works by outrunning ick's known life cycle. If a fish is infected with ick, then trophons will drop off of the fish at some point during the process. The insisted stage doesn't have enough time to reinfect before the fish is transferred into a new aquarium. Ammonia isn't much of a concern with tank transfer method because every three days, the fish is placed into a new tank with new water or you always have the option of using ammonia reducers such as Amquel or Prime in conjunction with tank transfer method, since there is no risk of negative interaction because no medications are present. However, you do have the option of dosing Praziquantil if you need to deworm at the tail end of transfers two and four, or optionally transfers one and three. The fish only needs 24 hours of exposure time to Praziquantil, so dose 24 hours before you are set to make the next transfer. A second round of Praziquantil is required five to seven days after the first, but again, dose the medication 24 hours before you're set to transfer the fish out. Just remember, if you do this, then you can't use any ammonia reducers while Prazi is present in the water. Velvet tank transfer method eliminates both marine ick and velvet. It takes both ick and velvet's life cycle into account when planning out the transfers. The downside is that more frequent transfers mean more work and more salt water is used. We also recommend using chlorine rather than vinegar to sterilize the tank and equipment, rinsing thoroughly, and then air drying for at least 36 hours when performing velvet tank transfer method. So you'll want to drain the tank and sterilize everything immediately following a transfer. Here's the basis for the timing of velvet tank transfer method. Assuming worst case scenario and velvet trophonts start dropping off of a fish immediately after going into a tank, you have around 48 hours until the tomonts begin releasing free swimmers that will reinfect the fish. So a 36 hour transfer moves the fish away from the threat before this can happen. However, velvet trophonts 
can also remain on a fish for as long as 96 hours. So that's why you have to do more than one transfer at 36 hours. The standard 72 hour transfer or 71 hours for good measure can resume only near the tail end once the thread of velvet is gone and you're just concerned about the possibility of ick, which can remain on the fish for a longer duration of about seven days. Hybrid tank transfer method eliminates marine ick, velvet, brooklynella, and flukes. This is the most effective version of tank transfer method because it utilizes hydrogen peroxide. Scientific research has shown that two applications of 155 ppm hydrogen peroxide spaced six days apart can eliminate marine velvet disease. Anecdotal evidence has demonstrated that this strategy can also be successfully employed against brooklynella and flukes. So what we've achieved by combining two 30-minute hydrogen peroxide baths with tank transfer method is the most inclusive, effective quarantine strategy for saltwater aquarium fish. We will include a link on how to do a hydrogen peroxide bath in the comments section, but here are the basics. Use a large glass bowl or food grade plastic bucket to do the 30 minute bath. One to two gallons of salt water is usually sufficient to do the bath with more required for larger fish. The dosage is 20 milliliters of 3% H2O2 per one gallon of salt water. USP grade 3% hydrogen peroxide should be used. This is easily found at Walmart, Target, grocery stores, or drugstores. Everything with hybrid tank transfer method works the same as standard tank transfer method, except hydrogen peroxide is used twice. The two H2O2 baths must be six days apart, and then the fish is transferred. These can occur at any time during the tank transfer method, provided you observe the six-day rule. Final thoughts on tank transfer method. For all versions, you can use new salt water or water stored from a recent display tank water change to do tank transfer method. Avoid cross-contamination between the new transfer tank and the old transfer tank. Post tank transfer method, observe the fish for two to four weeks to ensure no other treatments are needed. The final transfer can be into a permanent observation tank. For standard tank transfer method, the transfers need to occur every 72 hours or less, not more. The total number of days to pass should be 12 or more, not less. A minimum of four transfers is required, with more required if doing transfers more frequently than every 72 hours. Time of day of transfers does not matter, provided no more than 72 hours elapse between transfer. For velvet tank transfer method, the first four transfers need to occur every 36 hours or less, not more. The last two transfers need to occur every 71 hours or less, not more. The total number of days to pass should be 12 or more, not less. A minimum of six transfers is required, with more required if doing transfers more frequently. For hybrid tank transfer method, don't overthink this. Hybrid tank transfer method is just standard tank transfer method with two hydrogen peroxide baths added in. The baths must be spaced six days apart, done in a glass bowl or bucket for 30 minutes, and then the fish is transferred into the new aquarium. You can use an air stone to provide oxygen during the bath and help mix the peroxide into the water. You can also use a heater if you think there will be a big temperature fluctuation in just 30 minutes. Thank you for watching our video. See links in the comment section below for more detailed information about everything we discussed. And join us on our forum for all reef aquarium related discussion.